I'm the storyteller and my stories must be told. A lot's happened since the 1980s. We've got the internet, graphics are photorealistic, and Manchester City are champions of Europe. Times really have changed. However, one thing that hasn't changed, with the ColecoVision, the fun goes on forever. Whether you're new or old to the ColecoVision scene, these are timeless classics, essential ColecoVision games. And with a slight graphical update, these could easily be re-released today and sell by the bucket load. Number 15, Miner 24 Niner. Atari, Activision, Magic, and Parker Brothers, those titans of the gaming industry, toiling away, diligently porting their VCS and Intellivision games onto various computer systems. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, a company called Microfun comes along. Enter Bounty Bob, making his grand debut on the ColecoVision platform as Miner 24 Niner. And let me tell you, this audacious relocation did Bob a world of good. He's emerged from the digital depths, none worse for wear. In fact, looking downright spiffy. Yes, my friends, the ColecoVision version of Miner 24 Niner holds its head high, basking in the glory of superiority over its original Apple counterpart. And get this, I kid you not, it's still highly playable today. And you get an extra level over the original. The ColecoVision may not have been as powerful as the consoles we have these days, but that didn't stop the developers who cranked out classic after classic. And this is another example of a game that is just as playable now as they ever were. Now, I couldn't tell you the difference between a ColecoVision Adam or a ColecoVision console. What I can tell you is that this game is flipping marvellous. And playing with a lesser ape is by no means a lesser game. And our ape, Donkey Kong Jr., is a bit of an unsung hero in the realm of video games. But this magnificent sequel is a shining example of what the creative juices were able to produce on the ColecoVision. It still feels fresh and innovative, especially with the gameplay mechanics. And for the time, it definitely breathed new life into the franchise. Oh, and there's hidden vines and hidden ropes as well. Such a lovely game. Number 13, Space Fury. Blew me away when I saw this in the arcade, especially with the speech. And get this, the alien looks better than in the arcade original. Graphically and naturally they've had to water it down for the ColecoVision, but the developers have added all the fun of the fair. I originally remember this game because there was this guy who pumped coin after coin into the machine, and I remember he smoked John Player's Special, and the cigarette smoke and ash was all over the front of the arcade cabinet, but I don't remember an unpleasant smell. Back then we didn't have a Scooby, and I seem to remember I was stood there like a dummy, inhaling all the second-hand smoke. I might as well have been a smoker. But this is a great game on the ColecoVision, if you can ignore the downgrade in the graphics. I'm a fan of this game, and I especially like the ability to upgrade your ship in between waves. Is it better than Asteroids? Well, it's a bit like identical twins. Get to know them, and ultimately they're different. So, another hit on the ColecoVision, and it makes the list. Number 12, Carnival. What a lovely diversion from Space Invaders. <laughs> the graphics are well-defined and cute. The sound effects and music for the time are brilliant. Well, it sounds like you're at the fair. And on top of that, it's arcade accurate. The only thing missing is the candy floss and hot dogs. For me, it's just a wonderful game from a wonderful time on a great piece of hardware. If you want excellent arcade ports, this is the console to own. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a game I couldn't live without, but it reminds me of the old-fashioned shooting galleries. And essentially, it comes down to how many points can you score before you run out of ammo. So, hurry, 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 step right up. Don't be shy, have a try. 
Oh, and if the music proves too annoying, to turn it off, you can shoot that little musical note on the right hand side. Let me know in the comments how long it took to get this tune out of your head. <laughs> Number 11, BC Quest for Tires 2. You are a wonderful little caveman known as Thor. It's also based on a comic strip of the same name from a chap called Johnny Hart. You've got to balance yourself onto a stone unicycle. Don't forget your loincloth uh, as our protagonist embarks on a caveman adventure that'll make you appreciate the evolution of gaming. So our prehistoric hero, Thor, we join him as he's dodging dinosaurs and dodging collision detection. It's like the Flintstones meets Jurassic Park, but without CGI. Instead, pixelated visuals that will transport you back to the Stone Age. So Grog has stolen your blonde cave chick. What? Women never had names back then. And it's up to you to exact revenge and get her back. It's a real blast from the past, and like any fossil, it's now starting to show its age. But it's still worthy as it captures the essence of early gaming adventures. Number 10, River Raid. One of my favorites on all platforms without question. On the ColecoVision, River Raid is chaos. In fact, River Raid on the ColecoVision is like a turbocharged joyride down the treacherous river where danger lurks around every bend and your reactive trigger finger is the only thing standing between you and a watery grave. It's the epitome of fast-paced arcade action and I'm already kicking myself for not having this in my top five. As you rip through the pixelated skies, you'll encounter fuel pickups, bridges, and enemy aircraft, all itching to turn you into a fireball. And you can't just go in there, steam in there like Rambo. River Raid demands strategy, precision, and nerves of steel. You see, fuel is scarce, and if you run out, it's game over. But here's the ultimate question. Have you got what it takes to still be the Top Gun? Highway to the danger zone. Number nine, Mousetrap. I'd probably get lynched if I didn't include this in my top 10. And they'd be justified because it's one of the best games I've ever played on the ColecoVision. That's right, Mousetrap is not all about rodents and cheese. In fact, it's a bit more like the Ratatouille of gaming, except with fewer French accents and more pixelated glory. And thank God, no onions. Our plucky little mouse could easily win a gold medal for cheese consumption. Now this is no ordinary maze. It's like a labyrinth of twisty corridors, dead ends and traps. Our little mouse isn't defenseless though. He can morph into a dog, a cat or even a fish. It's like an episode of Monty Python. Number eight, Gyrus. Get ready for an intergalactic cosmic journey that's out of this world. I'm not convinced that aliens exist. I personally think that we are alone. But if they did exist, these are the last buggers you'd want knocking on your front door. Alien scum. This is Space Invaders on steroids. And if you've never played it, get ready for a fantastic arcade experience. So let's twist, turn and pirouette your way through the galaxy. My eight-year-old daughter the other day asked me, she said, Dad, can people hear you talk in space? I replied, it's a lot worse than that. In space, nobody can hear you scream. She looked at me and then silence descended over her. She was proper spooked. Anyway, back to the game. It's a cosmic dance party where the only rule is survival. And apart from the step down in the graphics, this plays arcade perfect. Number seven, Donkey Kong. Unlike today's games, the original arcade Donkey Kong can't be completed. You could say it's better than the original arcade. On the original arcade, once a player reached the 117th screen, the game froze after four seconds due to a programming glitch. On the 16K version and later versions on the ColecoVision, there is no such issue. Not just that, it plays exactly the same as the arcade original. You've got hazards and obstacles at every turn. So it has the same special quality that makes it highly addictive and ape chasing has never been so much fun. 
Don't get me wrong, it's still horrendously difficult to master, but it's the ultimate pack-in title. And if you're wondering how to play it today, you can play it on the Nintendo Switch Online, which also offers up the original Donkey Kong Country series from the Super Nintendo. Number 6, Venture. I know, I know, it looks awful, but then so did Tetris. And in both games, I've seen better graphics on a calculator. And we all know, or should know by now, that great graphics don't necessarily mean a great game. But I kid you not, this is a pixelated dungeon crawler that even today will have you on the edge of your seat. And there's a fantastic challenge for everyone. You just have to open your mind, use your imagination. You know, that thing we had in the 70s and 80s. These dungeons are filled with surprises, let me tell you. Traps and enemies that hit harder than an angry troll with a toothache. It will constantly challenge and test the best of us. It's like the ultimate shopping spree. There's trinkets spread out all over the place, goodies for you to collect, but the currency is danger. It's a quirky challenge, and there's more to this game than meets the eye. Good luck, adventurers. No, I seriously mean it. Number five, Pepper 2. A game so obscure, it's practically a relic from a bygone era. But why, you may ask, should you bother playing it today? Well, picture the scene. It's the early 1980s, a time when video games were just starting to crawl out of the primordial pixel soup. And in this technological infancy, along comes Pepper 2, strutting its stuff on the ColecoVision. But here's the twist. You weren't just confined to one maze. Get this, Pepper 2 had the audacity to throw not one, not two, but four mazes at you simultaneously. I said you buy one, you get four free. So our feeble little brains had to keep track of four different screens at once. It was like playing chess against a hyperactive octopus. Utter madness and utterly brilliant. And you know what, the goal couldn't be simpler. Gobble up all the dots while avoiding the enemies that roam the maze. It wasn't about fancy graphics or complex narratives, it was about pure gameplay. Number 4, Frontline. Now, the ColecoVision itself was a peculiar beast, a home console with a bizarre controller that looked like an unholy union between a telephone and a Rubik's Cube, which ultimately answers the question as to why you need a super controller. But for Frontline, the ColecoVision controller, the one that comes built in with the console, makes perfect sense. And whilst Frontline isn't exactly a thing of beauty to look at, it's a beast of a game. Every step you take feels like a calculated dance with death. It's the kind of gameplay that will make your palms sweat and your heart pound as you inch ever closer to victory. It really is as simple as this. Frontline embraces the spirit of old school gaming where perseverance and skill reign supreme. But for many reasons, it makes the list. And I hope it makes your list too. Number three, I need a hero. And she's got to be sporting red, white and blue with a big massive pair of detonators. I'm talking massive explosions. The bigger the stick, the better. Apologies, I've just been reading an article uh, about Maria Whitaker and the mind drifts. Back to the game. Unlike a warm pint of lager, hero deserves a taste. There's something charming and retro about those pixelated blocky graphics that'll make you feel all warm and nostalgic inside. It's a bit like looking at a page three girl from the 80s, classic and unapologetically cheeky. But what sets Hero apart from the other games of its time is its damn addictive nature. Once you start playing, you'll find yourself losing track of time faster than you can say, tits up. But when you finally rescue those damsels in massive distress and claim victory, it's a feeling that'll make you want to grab a pint and celebrate like a proper hero. This is a gem that deserves a spot in your gaming collection. Number two, Ladybug. Ah, but a different type of lady. This one has six legs. And not only can she see you coming, she has a beautiful dome-shaped body, finished in Ferrari red. 
Ladybug is a classic arcade style maze game that'll get your heart racing faster than a V12 engine. V12 you say, eh? Well, this game is all about speed, precision and tactical manoeuvring. You've got to zip around the maze, outsmarting those relentless bugs and gobbling it up all the goodies before they catch you. It's high stakes, adrenaline pumping experience that'll have you gripping that joystick like you're on the verge of losing control. But why play it today? Well, it's up to you, I couldn't care less, but it's a timeless classic that still holds up to this day, in my personal humble opinion. It's a test of skill and reflexes, and a chance to prove your metal and show off your gaming prowess. It's like driving a Ferrari through a maze with bugs nipping at your heels. What more could you want? These are just a small example of more wonderful games that got away. First up, Fortune Builder. Another personal favourite of mine, Frogger. Next, go off. Absolutely love this. War Games. Spy Hunter. Fantastic arcade conversion of Turbo.
Number one, Zaxxon. Although my pick for the top, I have to say there are many great games that didn't even make this list on the ColecoVision. There's Burger Time, there's Tapper, Arctic Adventure, Smurf Rescue, Mr. Do, Popeye is brilliant as well. I quite liked Bump and Jump. Galaxian is a fantastic arcade conversion as well. Dare I say it, the Cabbage Patch Kids. <laughs> and I think one of the other games I played that was really good was Monsuma's Revenge. Now I really liked that, but I was able to complete it quite easily. Jumpman Junior was another terrific game, but I was just awful at it. I found it really difficult. But my god, Zaxxon, and the reason I chose it, is that it still packs a punch. It's still highly playable. And I also think, along with Donkey Kong, it put, or helped put, the ColecoVision on the map. Then there's the bragging rights. At home, or at retro events, when people see you take down the fortress, they'll be green with envy. Green like an alien's arse. Till next time, bye!